Welcome to Dreamland Sleep. My name is Alice, your host, and I will be taking you on your journey tonight. From the dawn of time, myths have shaped our understanding of the world around us. One such world was that of ancient Greece, a civilization marked by towering gods and mystical deities where divine interventions were commonplace and mythical beings tread the earth alongside mortals. This tale, the tale of Hecate's steadfast loyalty and her divine intervention in the abduction of Persephone, is one such fable steeped in magic, commitment and the darkest corners of the underworld. In the time before Hades' fateful intervention, Hecate's existence was one of solitude and mystery. As the goddess of magic, witchcraft, the moon and the underworld, she was often secluded from the other Olympians, dwelling instead in shadowy corners of the universe, navigating the thin veil between life and death. Hecate was known for her profound wisdom and her intimate connection to the cycles of life, death, and rebirth. Her realm of influence was vast, spanning the heavens, the earth, and the underworld, a testament to her primordial origins. Despite her solitary demeanor, Hecate was not unfeeling or detached. In fact, she was deeply empathetic, keenly aware of the joys and sorrows that wove themselves into the lives of gods and mortals alike. It was during one of her travels in the earthly realm, under the guise of the new moon's darkness, that Hecate first noticed the budding attraction between Hades and Persephone. Hades, the formidable lord of the underworld, was a figure of fear and respect, ruling over the dead with a stern but fair hand. Persephone, on the other hand, was the radiant daughter of Demeter, goddess of the harvest. She embodied the vibrancy and life of spring, a stark contrast to Hades' domain of death and decay. Yet Hecate noticed an inexplicable pull between them, a dangerous fascination that was likely to lead to turmoil. In these early days, Hecate observed from the shadows, her heart heavy with unease. She saw how Hades' gaze lingered on Persephone, the way his usually impassive face softened. Hecate also saw Persephone, innocent and unsuspecting, oblivious to the burgeoning interest from the underworld. Hecate recognized the signs of a brewing storm. However, she understood the laws of divine intervention, the balance between fate and free will. She decided to wait, to watch, and to intervene only if it was absolutely necessary. But as the days passed, Hecate's sense of dread deepened. Hades' interest in Persephone was not a passing fancy. It was an obsession growing stronger, threatening to disrupt the order of the cosmos. The scales were tipping, and Hecate knew she could not remain a silent spectator. Her role as a goddess of transitions and boundaries was not just to observe, but to act when the harmony of life and death was at stake. Still, Hecate could not act rashly. She understood the nuances of power and influence among the divine beings. A direct confrontation with Hades would solve nothing and could potentially exacerbate the situation. Her approach needed to be subtle yet impactful. She needed allies. And who better to protect Persephone than her own mother, Demeter, With the conviction of her decision burning bright in her heart, Hecate turned her steps towards the lush fields that were Demeter's domain. 
She took on the task of alerting Demeter about the impending danger to her beloved daughter, hoping that between them they could alter the course of the looming disaster. Little did Hecate know, she was already too late. Even as she walked the earth under the pale glow of her lunar torches, Hades was making his move and the world would never be the same again. As Hecate navigated her path, she heard a horrifying echo on the wind, a scream of terror that chilled her to the bone. It was Persephone. The abduction had begun. On an ordinary day, Persephone, the radiant daughter of Demeter, was enjoying the luxuriance of a verdant meadow. The sun shone brightly, illuminating the iridescent colours of the abundant wildflowers. As she picked a peculiarly beautiful narcissus, a chasm opened up beneath her feet. Out from this abyss, Hades, the dark and imposing ruler of the underworld, emerged in his golden chariot, drawn by mighty black steeds. Before she could react, Persephone found herself swept away, her terrified cries echoing around the suddenly empty meadow. As Hades thundered back towards the underworld with his captive, a ripple of dread spread through the cosmos. Yet none of the gods, so absorbed in their divine pursuits, paid heed. All that is, save for one, Hecate, the enigmatic goddess of the night, magic and crossroads. Far from Olympus in her remote abode, Hecate heard Persephone's muffled cries. The clarity with which she perceived this distant sound was not by coincidence. Being intimately connected with the earth and the moon, Hecate's perception transcended normal boundaries. She stood alone, her heart aching at Persephone's fear. Her instinct urged her to intervene, yet she knew the god of the underworld was not one to challenge lightly. Hecate was also mindful of the delicate balance of powers among the gods, a balance that Zeus, the king of gods, was keen on maintaining. Still, she couldn't ignore the unsettling shift in the cosmic harmony. This event held significance far beyond a personal tragedy. It had the potential to disrupt the divine order. Hecate moved swiftly through the shadows to the site of Persephone's disappearance. She found the meadow deserted, save for the fading scent of fear and the Narcissus, lying trampled and forgotten on the ground. She picked it up, her mind already contemplating the implications of this abduction. The repercussions would be severe. She knew that Demeter, as the goddess of the harvest had the power to render the earth barren. Upon examining the Narcissus, Hecate perceived a lingering trace of Hades's essence. The image of the god of the underworld rushing through the chasm with Persephone, frozen in fear, filled her mind. This was no ordinary flower, it was a trap a divine decoy designed by Gaia herself at the request of Zeus to ensnare the innocent Persephone. Anguish washed over Hecate, for she knew the potential consequences. Demeter's wrath could plunge the world into an unending winter, disrupting the cycle of life and death, turning the earth into a mirror of the lifeless underworld. At that moment, Hecate made her decision. She couldn't stand by and let the divine order be upended, nor could she ignore Persephone's plight. As the goddess of witchcraft, she was not unfamiliar with the underworld's workings. She knew she must act as a guide, a mediator between the furious mother and the god of death 
to rescue Persephone and restore balance. But first, she needed to inform Demeter of her daughter's fate, a task she knew would be as daunting as facing Hades himself. Thus, Hecate, the solitary goddess of the moonlit night, was drawn into a drama of Olympian proportions. The goddess known for her affinity for the dark and mysterious was now stepping into the limelight, preparing to journey through the shadows of despair and hope and making a vital difference in the divine scheme of things. The bright and lush Olympus had taken on a chill that bit the bones of gods and goddesses alike. The abduction of Persephone had transformed Demeter's countenance, her vibrant aura dimmed to a mere whisper. Despair had washed over her like a torrential rain, leaving her broken, her duties forgotten. With her neglect, the earth began to wither. Grain refused to sprout, flowers dared not bloom, and a relentless winter took hold. Olympus was drowning in an unusual silence, the mirth of gods extinguished. In this quiet despair, Hecate found her purpose. The goddess of magic, who remained on the outskirts of the Pantheon, who was more often seen in the company of spirits than deities, felt an unshakable pull towards the grieving Demeter. Unlike the other gods who chose to stay clear of the stricken goddess, Hecate dared to approach. Her heart ached for Demeter, and she felt a deep-seated desire to help. This was a mother's despair she was witnessing. It demanded empathy and action. Hecate revealed herself to Demeter, appearing not as a powerful deity, but as a confidant, a companion in her darkest hour. She shared what she had witnessed, the earth splitting open, Hades's chariot rising, and Persephone's cries fading into the abyss. Demeter clung to Hecate's every word. The confirmation of her fears was painful, but it also meant she was no longer bound by uncertainty. A glimmer of hope ignited in her eyes. Together, they embarked on a mission to find Persephone, a task of such magnitude that it felt like searching for a single grain of sand at the ocean floor. They journeyed far and wide, with Hecate's torches lighting their way in the darkest nights, and her arcane knowledge of the world aiding their quest. Every corner of the world heard their desperate cries for Persephone. Their appeals echoed in every cave and resonated in every valley. Still, they found no trace of the maiden goddess. Throughout this journey, the bond between Hecate and Demeter deepened. They found solace in each other's company. While the search was agonizing, it was also cathartic, a shared struggle fostering a profound connection between two otherwise disconnected deities. Despite their exhaustive search, they found no sign of Persephone on Earth, and it was then Hecate proposed what Demeter feared the most. They must journey to the underworld, to Hades' realm, to seek what they had lost. The very thought chilled Demeter. The underworld, the realm of the dead, was no place for the goddess of harvest and fertility. But her love for Persephone overshadowed her trepidation. She would journey to the ends of existence if that's what it took to find her daughter. Hecate, seeing Demeter's determination, knew their quest was far from over. The hardest part was yet to come. As the goddess of magic and witchcraft, her ties to the underworld were strong, and she knew the dangers that lay ahead. But she was resolute. She would be Demeter's guide and guardian in the land of the dead. 
She would face the wrath of Hades if need be. The decision was made. They would journey into the abyss, challenge the Lord of the Underworld, and demand the return of Persephone. Their resolve was as steadfast as their journey was perilous. Their destination loomed like a storm on the horizon, but they marched forth undeterred, propelled by a mother's love and a friend's unwavering devotion. With a final look at the dying world they were leaving behind, Hecate and Demeter ventured into the shadows, their path illuminated only by Hecate's torches and their shared determination. Little did they know, their actions would reverberate through time and shape the very rhythm of life and death. Thus, the journey to the underworld began, a test of their courage, their resolve, and their devotion. The tale of a goddess of magic aiding a grieving mother had turned into an epic quest, their fates intertwined with that of the world above and below. Hecate and Demeter had traversed the mortal realm in their fruitless search, their despair echoing in the barren landscapes wrought by Demeter's grief. It was Hecate, her senses sharp and attuned to the ethereal, who first felt the faint echo of Persephone's presence, a lingering trace in the cold, foreboding wind from the depths of the earth. She is not in our world, Hecate declared, her voice as firm as her resolve. We must go below. Descending into the underworld was no easy task. The realm of the dead was a place of shadows and echoes, a stark contrast to the vibrant world above. But Hecate, ever the torchbearer, illuminated their path casting long shadows in the endless dark. Hades' palace was a sight to behold, its grandeur a stark mockery of the freedom it had stolen from Persephone. Here, in the cold, stony heart of the underworld, sat Hades on his ebony throne, Persephone reluctantly at his side. A chilling silence fell upon their arrival, the denizens of the underworld pausing in their tasks, watching the confrontation with hollow, expectant eyes. Return my daughter, Demeter's voice echoed throughout the hall, a plea and a demand woven into one. Hades simply stared at her, his icy gaze unyielding. Persephone is my wife. She has eaten the food of the underworld, and by the ancient laws she belongs here, Hades replied, his voice as cold and unyielding as the obsidian walls of his palace. It was here that Hecate stepped forward. The dark goddess, often silent and observing, found her voice amongst the dead. She spoke of balance, of the harm that had befallen the mortal world in Persephone's absence. She invoked the old rules of give and take, of the necessity of a balance between life and death. Hecate's words were a soothing balm on the heated argument. Even here in the underworld, you must recognize the importance of balance, Hades, she implored. The world above is dying. If it perishes, who will populate your realm? Who will honor your power? Hecate's argument hit its mark. Hades, lord of the underworld, was no fool. He knew the balance of the world was fragile, that life fed into death, and death in turn made way for life. Yet he was loath to let go of Persephone, the vibrant beauty who had brought a semblance of life to his realm of the dead. Caught in his dilemma, Hades glanced at Persephone, the young goddess looking more a part of his world with each passing moment. Yet there was a light in her eyes that reminded him of the world above, a world he knew she missed. The conversation grew tense, 
the silence heavy as the fates of two realms hung in the balance. Hecate, acting as a mediator, could sense the conflict within Hades. There was a part of him, she realised, that wished for Persephone's happiness, even if it came at his own expense. With careful words and respectful appeal to their shared divinity, Hecate subtly nudged Hades towards a compromise. It was a defining moment, not just for the distraught mother or the anxious wife, but also for Hecate herself. She was no longer the quiet observer, the solitary goddess in the backdrop of a larger play. Her words, her actions, her insistence on balance and fair play held the power to steer the outcome of a conflict that threatened the very cycle of life and death. Hecate, the torchbearer, had become a beacon of hope, a crucial voice of reason in a standoff between powerful, obstinate forces. And thus, in the heart of the underworld, illuminated by Hecate's torchlight, the first seeds of a potential compromise were sown. Amidst the shadows of the underworld, Hecate's incandescent torches seemed to flicker uncertainly, a rare event under her dominion. Yet, the stakes had never been higher, and even the most powerful of goddesses could waver in the face of the unknown. Hades, the somber lord of the underworld, brooded on his ebony throne. His gaze alternated between Persephone, his radiant queen, now desolate in her heartache, and Hecate, the mediator, her grey eyes steely and unyielding. The kingdom of the dead, usually brimming with souls and echoing with their soft murmurs, was eerily silent, as if all of creation held its breath. Hecate began, her voice echoing through the vast expanse. A compromise must be reached, Hades. You've disrupted the balance of the world, tampered with the natural order of things. Demeter's heartache, it's not just a mother's pain. It's freezing the earth, starving mortals. We have a responsibility to them as well. Hades' jaw clenched. She is my wife, my queen. She belongs here with me. His voice rumbled like a distant storm. And she is also Demeter's daughter and a goddess of the harvest, Hecate replied. She belongs there as well. Hecate proposed a solution, a compromise she had pondered during the agonizing journey through the underworld. Persephone would spend part of the year with her mother when the earth would flourish and part of it here with Hades when the earth would rest. The seasons would mirror this cycle, spring and summer above, autumn and winter below. Hades considered Hecate's proposal, his dark eyes thoughtful. There was silence in the great hall, punctuated only by the quiet sobbing of Persephone, a heartbreaking background score to the monumental negotiation. Hecate held her breath. If Hades agreed, they could rectify the order of the world. And then, Hades nodded. Very well, he said. His voice was as cold as his kingdom, but there was a note of resignation in his tone. Relief washed over Hecate, but a new problem emerged, one she had not foreseen. Persephone had eaten the food of the underworld, six pomegranate seeds to be exact. Even a bite of the underworld's fare bound the consumer to the realm, an unbreakable ancient rule. It seemed their effort might be in vain after all. But Hecate, quick thinking and resilient, offered a solution. The goddess of witchcraft, skilled in the ancient secret laws of the universe, proposed that the seeds would bind Persephone for only six months of each year, 
equivalent to the number of seeds she had eaten. This way, the young goddess would spend half the year with Demeter, giving life to the world, and the remaining half with Hades, plunging the earth into a temporary slumber. After what felt like an eternity, Hades conceded to the arrangement. Hecate, with the wisdom of ages and the cunning of the night, had brokered a peace that seemed impossible. She had navigated the labyrinth of divine politics and emerged victorious, securing the order of the world. It was then decided, Persephone would be the goddess of both realms, a symbol of life and rebirth in the upper world, and a queen of grace and power in the underworld. Hecate, for her part, volunteered to accompany Persephone in the underworld during her annual sojourn, to ease her transition and offer companionship in the bleak kingdom. As they left the hall, Hecate felt a weight lift off her heart, but it was replaced with another weight, one of a promise, a commitment. She glanced at Persephone, her face pale but resolved. The young goddess had a challenging path ahead, but she wouldn't walk it alone. Hecate would see to that. The goddess of the night, of the crossroads, was now also the goddess of unwavering devotion. Thus, a new equilibrium was established, one born out of chaos. The world would keep turning, the seasons changing, life and death continuing in an endless dance. All thanks to a compromise, a balance of light and darkness, life and death, love and loss. And at the heart of it, Hecate, the silent guardian, the bringer of balance, the beacon in the dark. Once the terms were settled, the first parting of Persephone and Demeter was a moment of both sorrow and relief. Demeter, while heartbroken at having to share her daughter with the underworld, felt comforted knowing Persephone would return. Persephone herself, forever changed by her experiences, said goodbye to her mother and followed Hecate into the shadows, back to Hades's realm. Hades welcomed Persephone back, not as a captive but as a queen, and in his own dark way, he made efforts to ensure her semi-annual stays were as pleasant as possible. This compromise was a step towards peace in Olympus and the restoration of nature's balance. The earth slowly recovered from Demeter's grief. Crops sprouted, trees blossomed, and life seemed to resume. Hecate, now playing a new and pivotal role, escorted Persephone back to the underworld. As the seasons changed, she would guide Persephone safely between the realms, becoming not just her guide, but also her confidant, her protector, and her friend. The three-headed goddess, once a solitary figure on the fringes of the divine world, now occupied an indispensable place. Her lanterns did not just illuminate the way for lost souls and guide Persephone, they also shed light on Hecate's shifting roles as she navigated the delicate line between darkness and light, death and life, sorrow and joy. She was both the herald of Persephone's departure, ushering in winter, and the harbinger of her return, announcing spring. Hecate's presence became an unexpected source of comfort to Persephone. The goddess of magic was a reminder of the world above, a part of her mother present even in the heart of the underworld. The bond between them deepened with each cycle of Persephone's descent and ascent, adding a layer of warmth to the chilling reality of the underworld. Despite her important duties in the underworld, Hecate still had responsibilities in the world above. 
She was a goddess of the in-betweens, the boundaries, the thresholds. As Persephone brought life and death into balance, Hecate brought the worlds into balance. She moved between her duties in the underworld and her sacred places at the crossroads, the thresholds and the doorways in the world above, fulfilling her roles in both realms. Hecate's heightened status was not unnoticed by the other gods. While still feared and respected, she was now seen as a bridge between their world and the underworld. This sparked a newfound respect for Hecate, who had proven herself to be not only a powerful magic wielder, but also a skilled diplomat and faithful friend. But perhaps the most profound change was within Hecate herself. Her involvement in the abduction of Persephone had brought her closer to the core of Olympian drama, challenging her solitary nature. Yet, through this, Hecate found a purpose and companionship that she hadn't sought but now treasured. The aftermath of the abduction and the ensuing agreement shaped a new order, where Hecate became an integral link between the realms. It was a transformation as profound as the changing of the seasons, a testament to Hecate's devotion to Persephone and a reminder of her formidable power. The tale of the abduction of Persephone has always been an evocative narrative of the ancient Greek mythology, but the illumination of Hecate's role in this story only enhances its depths, serving to expand our understanding of the complexities of the divine and the shared themes of love, loss and loyalty. Her involvement brings with it a multifaceted lens through which we can view this iconic story. One that paints a rich tableau of heroism, maturation and the inexorable cycles of nature. Hecate's character emerges from this tale as one of immense significance. From her role as a solitary goddess, known for her connections with magic, witchcraft, the moon and necromancy, she was thrust into a central position in one of the most pivotal narratives of Greek mythology. In becoming the key figure in resolving the conflict between Hades and Demeter, Hecate illustrates her diplomatic abilities, her bravery and her unwavering loyalty to Persephone. Her presence permeates the tale her footprints echo in the quiet corners of the narrative. Through her, we see the story unfurl from a unique vantage point. Hecate was the only one who heard Persephone's cries during her abduction, showcasing her attunement to the subtleties that others miss. As she stepped forth to guide Demeter in her desperate search, she displayed an empathy and resolve that further augmented her character. The resolution of the conflict and the creation of the compromise underlined Hecate's crucial role in restoring balance. It was through her intervention that a semblance of peace was achieved among the divine entities. The seasons returned to their cyclical pattern and the world regained its fertility. Beyond that, however, the ordeal transformed Hecate's role in the Pantheon. Previously a somewhat remote figure, she became deeply entwined in the lives of Hades, Persephone and Demeter. As Persephone's companion during her time in the underworld, she straddled the line between the realm of the living and the realm of the dead, reinforcing her inherent connection to both life and death. In an intricate tale such as this, where themes of devotion and darkness intersect and overlap, it is Hecate's unwavering commitment to Persephone that leaves a lasting impact. Even after the deal was struck, 
Hecate remained steadfast in her duty, acting as a bridge between the underworld and the upper world for Persephone, as well as a source of companionship and guidance. In the end, the story of Hecate's involvement in the abduction of Persephone is a testament to the transformative power of loyalty, devotion, and the bonds of friendship. It reminds us that even within the grandeur of mythological narratives, it is these fundamental human values that stand the test of time. Through the lens of Hecate, we are allowed to see the abduction of Persephone as not only a story of loss and reunion, but also one of bravery, negotiation, and enduring commitment. Her role in this tale, albeit a supporting one in the traditional narrative, is nonetheless crucial and deeply impactful. The echoes of Hecate's decision still reverberate in the stories told about her, forming an integral part of her mythological identity. Her journey, entwined with the fate of Persephone, stands as a testament to the multifaceted nature of devotion in the face of overwhelming darkness. <laughs>